Hey guys, it's Pope. Welcome back to my channel. I'm about three and a half weeks out from the Arizona Pro. I'm gonna go take another stab at my Olympia qualification. And today is back day. I did a Q&A on my Instagram story and got some really, really good questions. So today I'm gonna to take some of those and answer them in between some of my exercises because some of the questions I wanted to just do video format and go in a little bit more in depth the answers because I got some really good ones. So thanks for that. Yeah, right now warming up with bands, just trying to get some heat going in my lap. Then we're gonna start with some deadlift on the Smith machine. I'm doing a lot of my lifts on the Smith machine lately. It's just when you're really fatigued, it's easier to focus on like your muscle contraction without as much stabilization going on. We have back squats on the Smith machine recently too, and I'm really liking using it. Everything on my programming, I do include home gym substitutions, so anyone can do these workouts. This one's really easy. You would use a barbell instead of the Smith machine. But like I said, every exercise I do, if it involves a machine, I include a substitution. So you can do it in a home gym, minimal equipment. Okay, one of these questions. What do you think is the harder adjustment from weightlifting to bodybuilding, the change in workouts or diet? If you're new to my channel, I did Olympic weightlifting for 10 years, competed for Team USA, so my background is in weightlifting. And I would say the change in workouts is probably a lot harder. Um, as far as dieting goes, I had to make weight for Olympic weightlifting competitions, so I've done like extreme dieting before, especially when I was competing in a lighter body weight category earlier in my career. Really restrictive eating, counting macros, not like a meal plan, but still like struggling day to day on diet. So I've, I've done this hardcore dieting before to make weight and it was actually even harder then because you have to diet down, get really water depleted and then go try to lift the most you've ever lifted in your life <laughs> on stage. And so it's kind of similar. So I've kind of experienced this before. The training is very, very different. When I first started bodybuilding, I thought it was so, so boring and I thought that nothing was gonna change. And it took a long time of like the work snowballing to start to see changes in my physique. And then I started getting more addicted to it. Like you have to kind of wait it out and see what's gonna happen. And then you start to kind of fall in love with bodybuilding, I think. And then like the monotony of it becomes kind of more exciting because you know you're gonna get something out of it. So the mindset of weightlifting versus bodybuilding from that point of view is totally different because in weightlifting, it's like very obvious that you're getting stronger or not. And it's like so exhilarating to try to be like making a lift and like having an adrenaline rush while you're lifting. That's not really a part of bodybuilding. So just like the mental game when it comes to training and knowing that the work's gonna pay off is much, much different. We're moving into a suitcase deadlift now, doing this on the Smith machine again. Really like this particular exercise on a Smith machine. Cause like I say, you can really control the bar path and really focus on squeezing in with the lat. One thing on any kind of row, a good tip is always direct the weight towards your back pocket. I'm also getting a really good stretch being able to like lengthen at the bottom. Always going for full maximum range of motion and maximum contraction. Okay, next question. How do you manage difficult and sad personal life events and keep on training? For me, ever since I started in Olympic weightlifting, I use that as like an outlet for anxiety specifically. I really struggled with anxiety for like a long time period in my life. I don't really as much anymore, surprisingly, but I really used that as a way to like channel a lot of that like tension like in my mind and my body. And uh, so just over time, the gym became my place to like deal with things like that. It's always been like that, always will be like that. I feel so much better after a workout, no matter what. So I think one of the keys when you're like really going through some shit is make sure you're not like actively engaging in the thoughts about whatever the thing is that's sad or stressing you out. Turn off your phone, set it to airplane mode, whatever you gotta do to just listen to music and like 
let your endorphins flow during the exercise that make you feel good. Um, one of the most difficult things that I've been through is one of my best friends committed suicide and it was one of my best weightlifting friends, um, someone that supported me throughout my entire career. So after that happened, um, it was very heavy, no pun intended, for me to do weightlifting. And that was when I started kind of exploring some other options of what I could do. And during that time, like really processing, I think that's what my friend Ryan would have wanted me to do, like follow whatever made me the most happy. So I think there's always like something you can like take from bad experiences and try to push yourself forward anyways. And a lot of the times the gym can help you do that. You just gotta like channel it in the right ways and find the right things that help you de-stress or help you process those emotions. For me, it's getting under a heavy barbell. So it's like a benefit to me. You just gotta be able to kind of block it out and focus and think about being like in your body and in the moment in the gym, I think. We're moving into a superset now. We're doing assisted pull-up combined with a Meadows row. Okay, next question. Any tips for first show true novice? If you don't know a lot about bodybuilding, there's a category called true novice, which means it's your very first show you've ever done. And so it's a category for ultra beginners. So there's no pressure in that category. And you can enter multiple divisions at each show. So for example, at my first show, I can't remember if I only did novice or true novice. I know I did novice. And then I also did open, which just means like the main competition. And y'all are gonna laugh because one of my goals as far as like how I present myself on stage, it's to get back to how I presented my posing at that first true novice show. <laughs> it's so funny to think that with all this experience I've been gaining, like literally that girl that walked on stage is my, my goal now because I felt so free and so confident because oblivion is literally bliss. I had no idea what I was doing. And so there was no pressure. I just went out there and strutted my stuff and was like, hey, look at my muscles and walk off. And then once I started to get more educated, once I learned more about posing, once I was developing my physique, there was this pressure put on me and I lost some of that confidence somehow. And just the stage presence and how I carried myself at that first true novice show, I finally felt like I did again at this last show in Tampa. But you could see in my presentation, go back and watch the video from my Atlanta Pro Show where I stumbled during my posing because I was so nervous. I was like shaking on the inside. So full circle, my best advice for a true novice is just go have fun and really just live in the moment. It does not matter how you place. It doesn't even really matter what you look like. Just go gain the experience, have a good time, fall in love with bodybuilding, fall in love with competing and just like really own whatever it is you're bringing onto stage that day. Because if you're like me, you're gonna remember it forever. And you might be wanting to replicate that feeling again forever. So really just like be there and just have fun. That's my best advice. <laughs> the song. <laughs> they play this every day. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have the biggest back on stage. Okay, last question I'm gonna do. What do you do when you feel your weight loss is plateauing during a cut? Well, you kind of have two options. You can either add on another layer and push harder or take a break and maybe it's time to re reverse diet and work on your metabolism a bit. What I mean by adding on a layer, for example, when I started stalling in my progress, I had to add on a second hour of cardio every day and really reduce my carbs. I did that in two phases. So I added on the cardio first, which got a little bit more progress. Then I stalled a little more and I had to drop my food even more to keep things progressing. That's obviously gonna lead to more fatigue, lower recovery, everything gets harder. You're having to put more hours in the gym. You may not be able to add on those layers right now or you may be mentally burnt out in that case, it's probably time to reverse diet, build your calories back up to maintenance, maybe even a slight surplus, 
give your body a little break, stay super consistent during that time. That's really, really major key. And then cut back down again from those higher calories and you'll probably get a better response the second time around. That's probably gonna be it for today's vlog. Like I said, I'm three and a half weeks out. I've been kind of just coasting since Tampa, just trying to maintain my shape. I obviously went back up and wait a little bit or a little rebound from the show. And now it's time to suck back down and get super lean again for this Arizona Pro. I've got two chances left on the calendar, back-to-back -back weekends. Really don't wanna do that second show, but I'm gonna do it if I have to. I really wanna make the Olympia. I believe that I'm capable of it and I'm ready, ready to work for it, so let's go. Subscribe to my channel and follow along and hopefully we're gonna get that qualification done. If you wanna join my program, the details are in the description and I'll link it on here as well. Open to all fitness levels. Anyone can do these workouts and we can train together. See you later. Bye.